Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I go by Hiram or Bogwa. Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'll be covering classes and objects. We'll go ahead and get started. So I'll first start by opening up IntelliJ. Create a new project. Option Java. And note that I'm using version 2020.3.2. Next. Next. And then I'll give this uh, a name. Classes. And objects. So in my source folder, I'll go ahead and create the main class. Right click, new, Java class, app runner. Remember all Java programs begin their execution from the main method. So we'll go ahead and add that. Again, in IntelliJ, you can just type PSVM and hit enter. And that will generate the main method for you. And for now, I'll just go ahead and print out a statement. Then I'll go ahead and run it, right click, run. And there it is, compiles fine, and the app has started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create two classes that we're gonna instantiate and utilize. Uh, the first one will be called driver. There it is. And then I'll create another one. I'll call it vehicle. There it is. Inside this class, I'll define some properties. Inside the drivers class, I'll define some properties also. Define a vehicle utilizing the class vehicle. Vehicle. And there it is. So this driver has an attribute of type vehicle. And the vehicle has attributes make, model, and year. What I want to do is add a method that can print out the data that's within that class. So public void. A shortcut that you can utilize in IntelliJ is Control D, and that duplicates the line. And IntelliJ shortcuts are very, very handy, and you should familiarize yourself with them. So I'll put a link in the description linking you to an IntelliJ shortcut cheat sheet. Model. Model. Again, this is just being on the, that line and hit Control D. This is on a Windows. On a Mac, it might be. Command D, but don't take me for my word. Try that out. Uh, look into it. And similar here in the drivers class, we're also going to print out the details. Instead of printing out the vehicle details here one by one, I'm going to call vehicle dot print vehicle details. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go back to our main class. If we were to run it, let's see what would happen. Right click, run. 
the difference between a class and an object is an object is an instantiated class. The class is just the definition. It doesn't become an object until we instantiate it. And once we instantiate it, what we tell Java is like, hey, create an instance of this class in memory. So the way that we do that is driver, driver equals new driver. And as you can see, we use this new keyword to instantiate that class. So now we can say this driver is an object. Based on the way we instantiate this class, when we call new, we're passing empty parameters. So in a class, we have what's called a constructor, and that's what defines how this class can be instantiated. How do we turn this class into an object? And as you can see right now, we don't have any, we haven't really defined anything. And that's because Java creates the default constructor, which is just empty parameters. We also have the option to define our own. So the way we define that is public driver. There you go. But before we do this, I want to comment this out. I'll, I'll completely get rid of that. Let's first run this application like this and see. As you can see, the only thing that was printed out was app has started. So what happens whenever we add our constructor back and run this? So as you can see, app starts and then after that driver has been created because now what we've done by defining this constructor is we've told java hey we do not want to use your default constructor we want to utilize ours and that's because this gives us the ability to come here and do things like this So then now I'm able to assign my variables and typically we want to keep our variables above our constructor. Now the power of defining your own constructor is that you can set data inside that constructor. We can default this data, right? For now, I'll comment out the vehicle print line and then we're going to call this print driver details. Actually, first, let's uncomment this driver details and see what happens if we were to run this the way like that. As you can see, we get a null exception. One of the benefits of using IntelliJ is you can just click into the line that you're error happened so here driver line 19 and that's vehicle and that's because we haven't initialized that vehicle but for now let's comment that out and let's run it again as you can see th those driver details were printed because as soon as we initialize using that constructor those details are set here so whenever we say this we're accessing all the properties that we have access to within this class itself. So this dot description that allows us to grab the attributes and we can also even do this dot print driver details. So I'll show you that. There you go. And we can print driver details automatically. So if I come here and I comment that out, let's run it again and let's see. There you go. So in Java, we can do what's called overloading, and that allows us to define multiple constructors with different parameters. So we have this empty argument constructor, and we can define another one. Now note, if we're to define the same one, IntelliJ tells us no, 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 that's an error. then we'll just set that data. So this is the one of the benefits of utilizing this keyword. 
here we have name we have description they're both named the same so how are we gonna know the difference between the two the way we do that is this dot name equals name whenever we try to access the name property or description or age or any of these properties in here without utilizing the this keyword java would think we're referencing these properties because these are the properties that are in the nearest scope and then i'll uncomment this and then we'll go to the vehicle class and here i'm just going to define one constructor So let's go back to our main class. So we've defined a driver, right? We'll keep the driver the way it is defined by. So if you look at the syntax of the constructor, we don't have any return type. There's no return types in a constructor. So it's not like a method. A method has a return type. And one thing you need to know is the name should always match the class's name. If I call this driver two, driver er, then that's not a constructor. Now something to know is whenever you define a constructor automatically the java default constructor goes away you can no longer instantiate that object with a default constructor you have to utilize the constructor that was defined so in this instance i cannot instantiate this vehicle like this i need to pass those details And one of the benefits of IntelliJ is it automatically tells you like what property this is. What's the name of this property? So here I'm able to tell that this is make, this is model, this is year. Here, instead of like defining a new variable and assigning it, we can automatically just assign it with one inline. So where we do driver.vehicle equals new vehicle. And there goes the definition. And now from there, we'll call print driver details which prints those driver details. And then after that, it's gonna call print vehicle details, which is gonna print the vehicle details. All right, so let's go ahead and run our program and see. Voila, there we go. We have Hiram details, age, description. And then here we have vehicle details, make, model, year. Something else that I wanted to cover was uh, static methods. Public static test static call. So I wanted to show you how a static call works. How come we're able to call this print driver details method that's not static inside a static method because if you can remember if you've watched some of my earlier videos you're not able if I was to define a non-static method in this class I would not be able to call it in this main method since the main method is static so why is it we're able to call the print driver details well that's simple because of the way static methods work so let me show you in this instance if we wanted to call this test static call which is a static method that I've defined we can call it like driver dot test static call matter of fact let's move it up as you can see here we're calling this method without having to instantiate the class now remember I say instantiation is when we create that instance of that class in memory but here for a static method matter of fact anything static we can call that directly without having to instantiate the class which is why I'm able to do driver dot test static call instead of doing driver equals new driver and then do driver dot test static call 
I can call it directly since it's static. But once I remove that static, sorry, but once I remove that static, it complains. So let's undo that. Let's test it out. Static call test. So that's how static calls work. I'll cover more on static next when I do accesses, but for now that's the basics of static properties. The last thing that I wanted to cover is what's known as an inner class. So as you can guess, I can define a class within a class. Inner class. I'll call this uh, personal details. SSN. Now, an inner class will work the same way the methods work uh, and the properties in that we cannot access this inner class from outside until this driver class has been instantiated. Let's define that inner details. So here, what we can do is we can, so here what we can do is driver Die. personal details and then do personal details equals equals driver dot new personal details now note this interesting syntax of how we're initializing the personal details this is the inner class so first we have to instantiate that driver class which grants us access to that inner class. And then there, from there, we can do driver. So we first access the main class, and then we do dot new personal details. And now we have access to personal details here. So now we can do personal details dot SSN equals, I'm not gonna give you my social security number, 555. So that covers the basics, and the important things to know is how constructors work, what happens whenever you define your own constructor, um, how you can create multiple constructors, how to utilize this keyword, and also just instantiating new objects, right? How do you go about defining a new object? Also accessing static data. That should cover the basic fundamentals that you need to know with regards to classes. And objects. Thank you for watching my tutorials. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you haven't and also check me out on Instagram at codrush.io.